It's Keith. Actually recording this with my tablet. I've been at the office since 7 p.m. yesterday. And right now it's 7.33 p.m. the next day. I swear to God on everything. I've been here for almost 25 hours. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm finishing up my book right now. We're going into editing the window cleaning blueprint. And when you write a book, it dude, it pulls so much out of you. It's, it's such a deep process. So I want to share this with you real quick for you window cleaners. This is a tip I just want to share with you. When you're working on job sites, when you're first uh, brand new in any type of small business, you'll do anything for money. You do anything to make a, a couple extra bucks. Customer says, hmm, you think you could climb up on that ladder and uh, do some crazy shit? Sure. You're like, you'll do it, man. Well, if you're cleaning storefronts and plazas, window cleaning, or even customers' homes, and you find yourself dripping in sweat, carrying a big, heavy, clunky ladder into the restaurant or into the house, and moving away tables and silverware, wrapping the ladder and climbing all the way up 20 feet to dust off something or to clean something, and you're doing it for like, like six bucks or something. Oh, my God. Well, here's the problem with that. In the beginning, you do it because you need the money, right? But once you grow your business, those type of things become like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. you're like, I don't got time for that. Like, you get anxiety when the customer even says, hey, aren't you going to do that thing again that you usually do? I'll just tell you. I, got, I can't tell you who it is, but I got a customer who wants us to do some crazy stuff in his restaurant. And, dude, I love this customer. He's awesome. The reason he wants us to do it all the time is because I did it, Right? I was actually crazy enough to bring ladders into the restaurant, sure, and do this crazy stuff way up high. That needs to be done. And now, uh, you know, your customer will always want you to do that stuff. And it's only worth it <laughs> if you're like, pardon me, I haven't slept in about 40 hours, so I don't even know if I'm going to upload this video. It's only worth it if... And this applies to any small business. If you, like, quadruple the price and you're making, like, I don't know, I want to make, like, an extra 100 bucks. If even that takes me a half an hour, I don't care what it is. Because when you're dripping in sweat way up on a ladder doing something crazy, you know, it's not worth it anymore. But, but whenever, here's my point in the damn video. Whenever you do something in front of your customer, now they see you as, oh, he's the guy who does that crazy shit. And they'll be on the phone with her. You'll be getting phone calls. Hey, I heard you do that crazy stuff, right? And they'll want you to do it. And then it'll spread like wildfire. So be careful of what you do in front of your customers and be careful what you do for money. Or once you start making more money, to, to get rid of those services. Tell the customer, yeah, um, yeah, we don't do that no more. Oh, come on, just do it for me. Okay. No, no, no. This is our new policy. We don't do that no more. If you want us to do it, it's going to cost this much. Well, who else am I going to have to do it? Well, I don't know. You could pay us, pay me quadruple to do it, or I'm not doing it anymore. And it's really hard to stick by your guns. One thing, uh, I actually posted on Facebook the other day that really got to me. Because you know how you'll hear, you'll hear a saying, but it won't really click. And then one day you're like, that's what that means. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Well, when you do things in your business that frustrate you and make you no money and they piss you off and just drive you crazy to no end, and then you keep buckling to the customer and doing it because you, you, you're afraid or you need the money or something. It's completely understandable, right? But there has to come a time where you do what John C. Maxwell said in his book, um, Failing Forward. He said, you have to say no to the good so you can say yes to the best. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? Say no to the good so I can say yes to the best. I don't have any best in my life, right? Who has any best in their life? Once you your name starts getting out there and your phone's ringing off the hook and people want you to do work, you have so much opportunity that you're trying to grab, you can't grab it all. You have to say no to the good so you can say yes to the best. And it's a hard thing to do. It takes discipline. But when you find yourself several years or seasons into your business and you're sitting there scrambling, busting your ass for peanuts, passing up or not even having time to take on jobs that could be making you quadruple the profit then you will start saying no but it takes a little bit of faith you have to know you got to know that work will come right or you'll take out a bunch of low profit work because you need work and then you'll get swamped and you can't take on the high profit work and now you got to keep your integrity with your customer right 
the more and more and longer you do this, any business or small business, is the more you really start to grow a pair and start to stand up for yourself. It just takes time. So if you let your customers walk on you and you just, you know, I don't know, thinking like an employee in your business is totally normal. And after time, you grow a pair. How does that guy grow a pair? How did that guy? How did that guy get to that point? You know, you look at you look up to some guy who who's been a business owner for years, right? He's real clear cut and directed. No. This way, that way. Like you just know not to screw with that guy. You know anybody like that? They're they're not mean or anything. They're just normal. But you just know not to cross them because they've earned their stars and stripes. Those guys have been through every scenario and situation they've been through all that shit and now they know that they're just not going to put up with it and you could just feel that sense of authority when you talk to them right and i believe that uh if you're in business for several years and you want to grow and you just keep leaning in that direction i mean it'll happen it'll get to the point where you know your customer asks you my arms can tired here hey can you do this crazy thing and you'll be like what'd you say <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But you'd be like, yeah, but it'll, uh, there's an extra charge for that because we, we normally don't do that. So that'll be quadruple the price. Uh, ah, come on. No, no, I'm serious. Like, I was with a customer just the other day. I did a quick, uh, a small, like, landscape job. And the customer, it, it was literally, well, I can't tell you what it was, but something very small. And I told the customer, uh, my company, we, I have a new minimum policy. It's a minimum of $85 for us to even show up on the job site and do anything, just to show up. So that'll be 100 bucks. And it was something so small and so quick and fast. He goes, 100 bucks." I said, yeah, that's, that's policy, company policy. I can't change that. And really, it's like a $30 job, right? And he, well, he looked at me go, he went, ah, okay, 100 bucks, whatever. I was like, Oh my God, I just made triple the money just by saying that's my company policy and sticking to it. Because, I mean, I think that here, Brendan Burchard, I also look up to Brendan Burchard. He something, said something amazing in his seminar, 10X Business and Wealth. He said, how you feel about your pricing and your company has nothing to do with your customers or your, your, your clients. There's you, your market, your marketing, your people, and your systems. And how you feel about that has nothing to do with reality. That's just how you feel about it, right? It might not have anything to do with anything, right? People might be willing to pay $100 an hour, right? How you feel about it, that is if you come from like a poverty mentality like I did, it takes years to, you know, wash your brain free of that shit. But, you know, it has nothing to do with anything. And if you're doing it really cheap, that's why they stick with you so long. And it's really easy for them to do business with you if your prices are that low. It, it just, it, you just get in where you fit in. You keep getting in where you fit in. It's one of my favorite sayings. Get in where you fit in. Think about that. All right, I gotta go. I gotta back to work on this book. Just ate dinner with the wife of Tron, and she's like, "Hey, are you coming home?" All right. And I'm usually home all the time. I work at the office during the day. I mean, no, I gotta get this book done. The spring is breaking, and this book has got to get published. There's people who want it. All right, I can't believe I'm uploading this. Peace. Look at this Pro Studio microphone, Shure SM7B for recording audiobook narration. I'm doing an audiobook version of it too. All sound deadening software and studio equipment. I got pro video equipment kicking. I'm about to get this office down the hallway. It's like 700 a month. It's huge. It's like a luxury suite office, dude. But I ain't trying to spend 700 a month in an office right now. Um, well, anyways, you can't see what that is, but it's a whole pro setup for, you know, camera shit you're probably not interested in that i'm just really committed to making all this happen i've invested a lot of money in this stuff because i, I just believe so much in it all right cool and then when i when i when i uh need a few minutes to like like take a breath and free my mind off writing because it's it's really hard to do i'll go find a drone bitches <laughs> fly the drone outside my neighbors here at the office think I don't know what the fuck they think I do for a living or what, uh, because if you look down the hall, so there's like, you know, like attorneys and financial advisors and like computer engineers and counselors. It's like a, a, a building. 
and everybody's like nine to five. But me, I walk around the hallways smiling and shit and fucking. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know, totally different state of mind, jumping around the hallways. Okay, I'm getting back to it, man. I'm fired up. Later.